if you are just tuning in, we're just going to wait a few more minutes to see if anybody comes in. Don't want to miss anyone here. I see uh, Lewis. Good to see you. Uh, Michael Pater, of course. Of course, good to see you. And uh, we'll be getting started here in just a few minutes if you guys are interested in sticking around or checking out the other sessions. So, yep, we'll be, we'll be here in just a bit. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, go ahead and let's see. We got a few people coming in now. Great. All right, so this is a Discord crash course uh, for those who are either unfamiliar or want a little bit of help getting started um, or some best practices we can talk about today as well. Um, we've got a very simple presentation here. Uh, shouldn't take too much of your time. Um, because we do have some awesome other sessions going on at the moment. Uh, so we're going to go through this. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to ask them in the middle of the presentation, and I will get to them as soon as possible. So as I mentioned, this is a little bit of a crash course for Discord, um, mostly designed at the, at the moment uh, for people who are unfamiliar with it. But of course, anyone can learn um, anything here. I've learned a lot personally from my experience uh, with working with students at the high school level. Um, while I use Discord every day, and I'll talk about that um, a little bit in the presentation, um, it really is the, the culmination of efforts uh, that you just get to learn a lot from people who use it a little bit more in depth. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. A little bit about me. I'm the uh, Chief Technology Officer at Illinois High School Esports Association. Um, mostly work on Google Admin, Broadcast, Social Media, Discord, pretty much anything technology. Um, that has to do with our esports association, which is a lot, because, uh, saying it's an esports association. I'm also a support analyst at Naperville School District 203. Um, I do daily uh, support, uh, sysadmin work, uh, opening and closing tickets, taking care of uh, either staff or students, uh, either Windows environment, uh, Chromebook environment, of course. Um, I do some networking, uh, some accounts, uh, firewall, and et cetera. Um, and I'm also a daily user of Discord, as I mentioned. Um, I'm an admin, a handful of Discord servers, uh, those being the Illinois High School Esports Association and then our Naperville 203 uh, esports server. Outside of that, I really do not. Uh, but uh, these are uh, servers that I help build. Um, and then I, I also help administer as well. Um, and then the IHSEA server for the state association, uh, obviously, and as I mentioned. So what is Discord? I know a lot of people here probably know a little bit about Discord already. Um, but Discord is a VoIP, uh, instant messaging, uh, and digital distribution platform designed for creating communities. User can create communities with voice calls, video calls, text messaging, media, um, and uh, each each kind of room that you create is called a server. And um, we'll get a little bit more into that uh, as we move forward. Uh, Discord is completely free to use. Uh, however, there are some premium features ranging from better audio quality the better video quality available with a uh, subscription. I believe they call it uh, Discord Turbo or uh, something along those lines. Um, and, and I believe the, the, the best use case for, for the premium features of Discord are for the industry professionals that are using it, um, perhaps for podcasting, uh, perhaps for live events, uh, using the, the live stream feature uh, to connect with their community at a larger scale. Um, but I, I really wanted to stress that Discord is free to use um, and uh, it, is, it is a very powerful tool. It can also be run in a web client as well as uh, a Windows and Mac uh, uh, actual download as well as on, on mobile devices. So um, very powerful, very easy to use tool that is absolutely free. Why use Discord? And, and especially here is what I'm talking about. Why use it in the Scholastic Esports realm? Um, it kind of checks all the boxes needed uh, for an esports program to succeed at our level. And what I mean by that 
is that it's an easy way for club members to communicate with one another in after school hours. That way you're not having to monitor uh, 50 group me chats or as, as the Illinois, uh, as Illinois has been moving towards a more uh, privacy centered um, environment for technology. Um, it is, it is a lot easier for a staff member or administrator of a school or a, a director of technology at a school um, to, to keep track of uh, this one group of esports individuals that will be using this. Um, a lot of people uh, right now have been moving, uh, in traditional sports, have been moving to an app called Remind. Um, but Remind is good for a staff member to reach out to a group of students to remind them to show up to a physical location and do something. Um, however, Remind does not help build that community. And esports is very much, and scholastic esports especially, is very much about building that community as well as having a space for teams to communicate um, and just your communicate or your community to communicate, excuse me, um, in general. So Discord is a very powerful tool um, and it allows you to do that with, again, that, that ease of access and at a glance features uh, for administrators to be able to look and make sure that all of the conversations that are happening at, during after school hours are appropriate and uh, on topic for, for esports. Um, as I just mentioned, it's easily monitored. Uh, coaches and administrators can view all text uh, conversations and monitor voice communication on the fly, whether that be on your mobile app or on a laptop or desktop. Uh, you can create sections specifically to fit niches within a program, such as community events or varsity play. And what I mean by that is within a server, you can actually create groups um, of either voice or text channels uh, and give different permissions to different students to access those specific areas. So for instance, if I have, uh, you know, our program at Naperville has, has historically been very large. So let's say, let's make it easy and call it 100 students. If I have a group of 15 students that are moderators on the server and also, you know, do administrative tasks, I can give them a moderator role, and that way those students have access to specific channels that will only be for the moderators to discuss server operations and whatnot. And that won't uh, be cluttering the uh, student that wants to just join and play Minecraft with their friends. Um, that that th You can separate those users in that sense and give more responsibilities or less leeway uh, to specific students uh, based off of their role in the server. Um, as I mentioned before, Discord is free to use uh, without a significant member cap. I believe the default member cap for a just basic free to use server is 10,000 members. Um, so <laughs> I doubt that any Scholastic Esports program would need to worry about uh, hitting that number of 10,000 members. Uh, but even if you do, it is also free to ask for a, a cap increase. And uh, at that point, become your server becomes a community. Um, or you can you can set your your server to a community way earlier um, if that's what your goal is. But Discord is very versatile, and then, like I mentioned, free to use. Um, is Discord safe to use? Uh, Discord has multiple layers of security built in to keep members, in this case, in our case, students, safe. Uh, each server can have a customized level of security, including email verification requirements, length of membership requirements, and much much more. What I mean by uh, length of uh, membership requirements is that Discord has a feature that when you invite someone to a server, um, it will ask them to be a member of the server for 10 plus minutes uh, before they can even chat or interact with the server in any uh, significant way. And the reason why you would want to turn that on is that if your server is being uh, somehow spread around uh, the internet, uh, trolls have a very short attention span and uh, more than likely uh, it, it does fend off a few uh, trolls here and there that may want to go in and, and, and do something uh, bad on your server. Uh, if they have to sit there and wait 10 minutes, they'll move on to whatever is new and shiny. Um, on top of this, there are also Discord bots uh, that can be used to add additional layers of verification, even going as far as having students agree to a rule set before gaining entry to the server. Very important because we'll go over bots in this next slide here a little bit more in depth. Um, but bots are super powerful and easy to use um, additions to a Discord server uh, that we use in Naperville that allow us to keep using Discord in a way that is responsible and um, keeping our digital citizenship in mind while also keeping privacy of our students in mind. The safest way to vet server members is via manual verification, which I will go a little bit over as well in either the next slide or the slide after that. 
Um, by manual verification, uh, we mean uh, you know when a student is coming into the server um, and you're sending out an invite to that Discord server, um, make sure that you have them fill out a, a separate form or, or a separate interest form. It could be your 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 club interest form. Um, on that club interest form, make sure to have a field that has their Discord name, um, including their their ID after the uh, Discord name. Um, and we'll I'll show a little bit about that uh, later on in this slide as well. Uh, however, the important part is is that you're able to manually verify. You can look at a glance at a spreadsheet that this person is this username. You can cross that off the list, um, and uh, that invite will then be used for that uh, individual. And you can give them the role within the Discord server to then kind of almost unlock their um, their account in in the server to be able to go and, and use the uh, what the server has to offer and talk to the community. And again, we'll go over that in a little bit. So here's my quick, I say it's a quick aside regarding uh, Discord bots. However, it's very, uh, it, it, I wouldn't say that it's complicated. It's just, it's a, another layer of using Discord that makes administrations and school boards comfortable with using Discord. Uh, so Discord bots are programs that users have made to enhance experience of a Discord server and its functions. Uh, different bots are created for different tasks. Uh, so for instance, there's a bot that you can download that's called Groovy. And Groovy is a program that is dedicated to just playing music on your server. That's all the bot Groovy does. So if a user, let's say, let's say you, you add Groovy to your server, if a user were to run Groovy's command in a text channel, which would be exclamation mark summon, Groovy would then join the user's voice channel and wait for a music request. The user can then, let's say they wanted to listen to Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, the user can type exclamation mark play Bohemian Rhapsody, and it would pull the audio from YouTube or from their favorite streaming service into the voice channel and allow them to listen to music with their friends or listen to music with someone in that voice channel as well. So that's just kind of a, a menial example of what a bot can do. There are tons of tons and tons of Discord bots that are available to use. And I'm going to go over two today that we use um, at Naperville uh, 203. And actually, here they are at the bottom. Um, this is very confusing, but the name of this bot is YAG. PDB, and that stands for yet another general purpose Discord bot. Um, what this bot allows us to do is it allows us to add that extra level of verification for students that are coming in. So when a student comes in, uh, this bot gives them a default role that kind of locks them down, only allows them to view the one channel that says rules. And then from there, they have to accept the list of rules um, that uh, that allows us to verify that yes, this is a student of Naperville 203, um, as well as other functions, and we'll go over a little bit uh, in a little bit. Alt Identifier is another uh, bot that we use, and it's used for protection against spam bots and alt accounts. So it's highly configurable, um, and it has a web client that you can use. And what Alt Identifier does is that when a student or when a user joins your server, it will send them a message on Discord and say. You've joined such and such server. It's asking for verification. Can you verify one of your game accounts with your Discord account? Um, and what that allows is if if a someone a troll, for instance, is trying to get into your server or spam multiple users' fake accounts into your server, uh, the alt identifier will automatically kick, uh, kick those bots and. Uh, Anyone who does not pass the verification process, and I believe there's a 10-minute window to do so, um, does get kicked out of the server. So while we've had students, legitimate students, join, fail the verification, or just didn't see the message um, and then get kicked out, the student will reach out to us and be like, hey, I don't know why, but I just got kicked out of the server. And that's when you can go in and manually verify them. Um, and, and this is, again, as a precaution. Uh, our, our, our district is very comfortable with us having this precaution. Um, and it's it's a little bit at the, at the beginning. It, it took some getting used to for some of our students, um, and it was a little aggravating at times for students, uh, especially just wanting to be able to join and use a server. Um, but once we got over that hill of having to verify just once and never again after you get into the server, then you're good to go. 
So Discord safety, and April 203, our verification process is multi-layered. Um, so right now I'm going to go kind of into our uh, Naperville 203 Discord account, which actually houses both the Naperville North and the Naperville Central High School Esports uh, uh, clubs and programs. So we do this to protect our students from unwanted spam and or verified user access. And the steps are as follows. And this is kind of a lengthy process, but again, we've streamlined it for our students and, it, and, it, and it's in a way that makes sense for our students. Um, however, it, it, it depends on what kind of level of security that you're comfortable with with your program. So at first, a student signs a contract to join the club on campus, and it aligns with our technology uh, acceptable usage guidelines and agreements at Naperville 203 that already exist. We work with our IT department to make sure that this fits in well with their mantra and their usage agreement. So once a student is at that point in the club, they've signed the contract, they've paid whatever fee they need to pay depending on what they're doing in the club. The student receives a Discord link that can be used to join the server. That link, you can choose to actually have only a one-time use. If, if you want to take this a step further, you can have a coach go in and create a specific link that is only a one-time usage for a specific student. That way, once the student has already clicked on the link, they cannot take that link and spread it around their friends or give it to anybody. The link will not be live afterwards. So that is very helpful if that is something you're interested in doing as well. For us, we just have one central uh, link that we use, um, one invite that we use, um, because we have so many other layers of verification that even if someone did end up joining that isn't a Naperville 203 student, they wouldn't be able to communicate with any of our students. They wouldn't be able to uh, reach out or say anything terrible or bad or do any malicious things or even just join the server in general uh, without then passing the rest of the um, uh, layers of security that we have. So as a student joins, as I mentioned previously, the identifier bot sends the student a message asking to verify their account's legitimacy. So they could do uh, email verification, they could do Steam verification, Twitch verification, whatever that may be. A lot of these uh, platforms that Alt Identifier works with are all platforms that most gamers have. Um, even you can connect it to your Rocket League account. You can connect it. All it does is, is it's like a virtual background check uh, for your student. And it doesn't take any of their information. All it does is make sure that it allows the coach to say, okay, this information matches with the information that they gave us when they signed up for the club. They're good to go. So once a student passes a verification, they can then read the server rules and accept them. So once they read the server rules, they can actually click a checkbox underneath our server rules, and they're let into the server. Um, as I mentioned here, if a, if a user fails the alt identifier verification or does not agree to the rules, the server automatically kicks them out of the server because if they're not accepting the acceptable use, then we cannot have them on the server. Anytime that a, stu a legitimate student has been kicked out from by the alt identifier bot, it notifies us. And then, of course, the student then ends up notifying us, being like, hey, I got kicked out for some reason. Um, and then we can help them through the process and manually verify them on our, our end. Um, and I will mention, while this does sound like a lot of work for a coach, um, especially for a coach like us, like our program is, is 500 plus students. Um, across two high schools, so it is a lot of students to verify initially, but it is absolutely worth the safety and security of our students. Everything is worth the safety and security of our students, and it's worth being able to use Discord uh, as a platform uh, as approved by our district. Um, and, and, and again, the reason why Discord is so important is because colleges use Discord uh, you know, you know, any any sort of gaming career or esports career nowadays that they could be moving on to expects them to have some level of familiarity with Discord, and so we want to build those soft skills. Most players, if not all, in our server have used Discord previously, but you you always do have that one or two students that have never heard of Discord, never used it before, maybe are coming from Skype or curse voice or whatever they may be using to communicate with their friends, maybe even just their phone outside of just using Discord. So we want to build the soft skills and we're helping students kind of get there. And, and on top of that, I do want to mention that with Discord bots, we do have our students kind of uh, verify that, that bots are working. Uh, students very often, I, um, I should say, students uh, interact with the bots 
occasionally, and that is teaching some soft skills in coding and programming. In my opinion, uh, when you start to learn how to communicate with a with a program, um, that's kind of the entry level of hey, that's kind of cool. I can type in a command, and this bot will will then spit out something or do something and uh, change the server. So they are learning these soft skills while building this Discord program. So as I mentioned, once the user accepts the rules, they are give they are put in. I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm tripping over my words now. Once the user accepts the rules, they are given a role on the server that notifies the coaches that the user is ready to be manually verified. So when the coach is ready to verify that student, they will cross-reference the student's username on Discord with their club sign-up form slash contract, as I mentioned. Once the student is given a starting role, the student can gain access to the general chat channels and role selection channel. Now, what is a role selection channel? That is another function of the gibberish bot, I'll call it, it starts with a Y, uh, the yet another general purpose Discord bot. That is the function of that bot. That bot can create a message that says, hello user, what games do you like to play? And it will list League of Legends, Overwatch, Rocket League, Fortnite, Super Smash Bros. And let's say a kid enjoys all of those games and wants to hear about all of them and everything that we offer at Naperville 203. Well, they can actually go in and click each game and as they're clicking the game, the bot will give them permissions to those channels. The reason why we have that set up that way is that a student that isn't interested in Overwatch or maybe isn't interested in Super Smash Brothers just will not have those roles and doesn't have to worry about keeping up what's going on in those channels. So it makes it very easy for students, very streamlined for students to see only the information that they want to see and keep up with only the community that they want and not... Uh, with communities that they just may not be interested in, or and, and and by the way, they can do that whenever they want. It does. It isn't just when they sign up for the Discord server. So, if they're in the middle of the year and they decide that they want to learn a little bit more about Super Smash Brothers, they can go back to that role selection channel. They can select Super Smash Brothers, and now they've got access to all of the channels and and can meet some of the students that that are at Naperville North and Naperville Central that play Super Smash Brothers. While the process is lengthy, again, I mentioned previously, it ensures that we can keep our server secure. And additionally, we have an audit log for all of our communications that happen on the server, including when a user joins or leaves voice channels on our server. That is also a function of yet another general purpose Discord bot. That bot is fantastic, and I will show you a little bit more about it uh, if you are interested at the end of this uh, presentation. Um, but what that bot allows us to do is that we can create an audit channel that is only accessible to coaches and uh, district administrators. Anytime a district administrator or a coach needs to go in and check what happened during a specific time, let's say a student said something inappropriate in a text channel and then deleted the message. Well, we can actually go in to the audit log and verify that a student spoke in that channel and then went and deleted that, that message that he posted as well. So there's a lot of accountability on our end that we can then show our, our, our administration that if there's ever, ever, ever a discrepancy, excuse me, in what a student is saying or what a coach is saying, um, and any time that we need to uh, involve an administrator, we can show in the audit log this is what happened this is exactly how it happened, what time it happened. It gives excellent timestamps as well. So it is a very powerful bot. Uh, and then on top of that, and I, I keep saying on top of that because this is very multi-layered for us, uh, Discord has its own audit log. However, Discord only keeps an audit log for every two years of activity. So if uh, our Discord server is actually turning two this year, uh, eventually all of the older uh, messages from two years ago will be overridden, and uh, th that doesn't make us comfortable. We'd like to be able to go back to all time um, and see uh, what changes to the server or, or what uh, text or voice channels have been happening. So we use yet another uh, general purpose Discord bot. Uh, we use that bot to, to collect that information. So <laughs> as I mentioned, it's a lot to take in. Um, there is a recording, of course, available for this, but I would love to field some questions because I know that there are questions regarding Discord um, because it is a very hefty um, 
uh, uh, topic, I should say. So I'm opening up the chat here. Nitro. Oh, yes. Nitro is the name of the Discord uh, uh, premium service. Um, can't wait to use and learn and utilize all. Yes, Alt Identifier is an excellent, excellent, excellent bot. Um, it helps with verification. You can lock down the server. You could even have the server set as like uh, if there's some sort of emergency and you know that uh, that that someone is trying to DDoS or attack your server, you can kind of shut it down in a way and have it uh, so that any user that joins uh, is forced to do like a manual verification and the coaches will get a ping when, when someone tries to join. Or you can set it so that, you know, a temporary 30-minute window, we can't have anybody join during this time because, you know, something is happening. But we've never had to do that. We've never been, and we're, we're, I would argue that we're one of the bigger uh, high school esports servers that are just for one program. Um, so we have we haven't had that issue. Um, our Discord link is not readily available everywhere. We don't post it on our website or our Twitter. We just give it out to our students, and it's okay that our students, uh, you know, give it out, give it out, and give it away, uh, because again, we have so many layers of security that anyone who cannot be verified um, just gets kicked out of the server anyway. So. Um, yeah, excellent, excellent. I'm glad to hear that you're, you'll be using Alt Identifier uh, for your server. If there are any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. I'd love to talk them over. Um, alternatively, I could also open up Discord and we could go through kind of a mock server if that's something that you're interested in. Yeah, absolutely. Lewis, I'm, I'm uh, happy to help. Reach out. Again, here's my email and then here's my Twitter account. If you need any assistance, please feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to help. Something I will say about our <laughs> our sessions is that I would love to be able to put on background music because now that the session is kind of wrapping up, ramping down, or, or wrapping up, I should say, um, I would like to just put like ambient music so that it's not super awkward silence here <laughs> for the rest of the recording. But if there's any questions that anyone has, please feel free uh, to reach out. I'll be here in the chat. Um, and yeah, that's all. Thank you very much for attending. Anytime, Jake. Thanks for stopping by.